Brian stared at him. It's a joke, right? Derek shook his head. Not at all, but I think we should wait for your mother to come home and talk to her and your father. We'll come back later. He turned to leave, and the other two men, still silent, followed him to the door. Just a minute, Brian stopped them. Maybe I didn't understand what you said. Let me get it straight. You want me to go back and do it over again? Live in the woods with nothing but a hatchet? Derek nodded. That's it. But that that's crazy. It was rough. I mean, I almost died, and it was just luck that I made it out. Derek shook his head. No, not luck. You had something more going for you besides luck. Brian had a mental picture of the porcupine coming into his shelter in the dark, throwing the hatchet and hitting the rock embedded in the wall and getting sparks. If the porcupine hadn't come in and he hadn't thrown the hatchet, and if the hatchet hadn't hit the rock just right, there wouldn't have been sparks. And he wouldn't have had a fire, and he might not be standing here talking to this man now. Most of it was luck. Let me explain what I mean. Brian waited. We teach what you did, or we try to. But the truth is, we have never done it, and we don't know anybody who has ever done it. Not for real. He shrugged, his shoulders moving under the jacket. Oh, we do silly little tests, you know, where we go out and pretend to survive. But nobody in our field has ever had to do it, where everything is on the line. He looked directly at Brian, like you. The one named Bill Mannerly stepped forward. We want you to teach us. Not from a book, not from pamphlets or training films, but really teach us what it's like so we can teach others more accurately. Brian smiled. He couldn't help it. You mean take a class out and show them what I did? Derek held up his hands and shook his head. No, not like that. Nothing phony. We haven't worked it all out yet, but we thought one of us would go with you and stay out there with you, live the way you live, watch you, learn learn. Take notes and make notes. Write everything down. We really want to know how you did it. All the parts of it. Brian believed him. His voice was soft and sincere and his eyes were honest. But still, Brian shook his head. It wasn't like you think. It wasn't a camping trip. I lost weight. But more than that, I didn't come back the same. And he thought, I'm still not the same. I'll never be the same. He could not walk through a park without watching the trees for game. Could not not hear things. Sometimes he wanted not to see, not to hear everything around him. Noise, colors, movement. But he couldn't blank them out. He saw, heard, smelled everything. That's what we want to know. Those things, Derek smiled. Look, don't say no yet. Let us come back and talk to your mother, explain it all, and then you can make a decision. All right? Brian nodded slowly. All right. Just a talk, right? Just a talk. The three men left, and Brian looked at the digital clock on the table in the entryway. It would be an hour before his mother got home. He had some studying to do. It was the end of May, and there were finals, but he decided to cook dinner. He loved to cook. It was one of the things that had changed about him from the time he was in the woods. He thought of it as the time. Just that, the time. When he was speaking quietly to Deborah about it, he tried to tell her of it. All of it, including the moments when he tried to end himself. When he spoke to her about it, he always started it with just those words. The time. A year had passed, and in the world around him, not much had changed. His mother still saw the man, thought not as much, and Brian thought it might be passing. What they had between them, the divorce, was still final, and would probably remain so. He'd gone to visit his father after the time, and found that he'd fallen in love with another woman, and was going to marry her. Things ground on, a day at a time. But Brian had changed completely. And one of the things that had happened was now he loved to cook. There was something about the food, preparing the food, looking at the food. There was so much of it compared to what he had in the woods. He enjoyed taking the food out, working with it, cooking it, and serving it and eating it. Chewing each bite, knowing the food, watching other people eat. Sometimes he would just sit and watch his mother eat what he had cooked. And once it bothered her so much that she looked up at him, a piece of sautéed beef on a fork halfway into her mouth. What is it? I'm just watching you eat, he'd said to her. 
it's something eating just to see somebody eat it's really something are you all right she'd asked of course he wasn't or maybe he was and had never been all right before in his life but he smiled and nodded sure fine but it was more than he couldn't tell her what was wrong or even if anything was wrong he couldn't really talk to anybody about it because nobody understood what he meant his father and mother had insisted that he go to a counselor when he first came back. And more to humor them than anything else, he went. But it didn't help. The counselor thought he was somehow mentally injured, somehow harmed. And the truth was almost the exact opposite. He tried to tell the counselor that he was more than he had been, not less. Not just older, not just 15 when before he had been 14, but more, much more. The counselor didn't understand couldn't understand because he hadn't been with Brian in the woods during the time. The time. I discovered fire, Brian told the counselor. Well, sure, but you're back now, Brian had stopped him. No, you don't understand. I truly discovered fire the way some man or woman did it thousands and thousands of years ago. I discovered fire where it had been hidden in that rock for all of time and it was there for me. It doesn't matter that we have matches or lighters or that fire is easy to make here in the other parts of the world. I truly and honestly discovered fire. It was a great thing, a very great thing. The counselor had sat behind his desk and smiled and nodded and tried to know what Brian was speaking about, but it wasn't there. He couldn't. And that became the way of it for Brian. In all his dealings with the new world around him, since he was reborn in the woods, as he thought of it, he had to be evasive, hold back. If he told the truth, nobody believed him. And if he was silent, which he fought himself becoming more and more, they thought he was sick. He couldn't win. He took two pork chops out of the freezer and thawed them in the microwave. Then he found the cookbook and flipped to the page for bread and pork chops. When he first returned home, he found himself wanting to eat a great deal. He would buy a hamburger, eat it, drink a malt, then think immediately of buying another one. That only lasted a brief time. His stomach had shrunk, and the food made him feel heavy, wrong somehow, and he stopped overeating. But he still took great pleasure in food, and he now prepared the pork chops slowly, enjoying himself as he worked. He cut the fat off them, breaded them, preheated the oven, and put them in a glass pan while they were baking. He looked at the clock again. His mother was due in less than a half an hour, and she was never late, and put two potatoes on a plate to bake in the microwave. He would start them when she came home. They baked in a few minutes, and they could eat before the men came back.